Hello everyone. In the last class, we were discussed with uh, instruments used in chain surveying. Instruments used in chain surveying. Instruments used in chain survey. So whereas in this topic, uh, before going to talk uh, instruments used in chain surveying, first of all, I would like to I would like to tell you one thing that uh, chain survey. So see here, as we discussed in the last class, we have horizontal distance equipments, horizontal angle equipments, vertical distance equipment, as well as vertical angle measuring equipments. So here in this first, I am going to record with regard horizontal horizontal distances. Horizontal distances. So these horizontal distances can be measured by using chains as I told you in the last class and then tapes electronic distance measurement measuring device and then tachometer tachometer so out of them first of all I am going to talk these chains and tapes but before going to talk with regards to chains and tapes as we discussed in the early class that in the classification of surveys we have some classification especially most of them are based on instruments used for particular type of survey. So see here, when we deal with the horizontal distances, so these horizontal distances are measured by using these particular instruments. So see here, we have some different types of surveys based on these particular types of instruments. So see, if you use chains and tapes, for measuring of horizontal distances, we call that particular type of survey is chain surveying. Chain surveying, or you can also call this one as tape surveying. When you make the survey by using chains, then you call chain survey. If it is done by tape, then we call this one as tape surveying. Likewise, electronic distance measurement. EDM survey. If you did with tachometer, then we call it one as tachometric survey. Okay. So we will discuss all these things in the further classes. But now, as an initial, we are in the first uh, modules, early modules. So therefore, now I am going to give you an introduction regarding this chain survey. So what is chain survey? And then what is the principle of chain survey? What is the purpose or objective of doing this particular chain survey? Then we will discuss how many types of chains and how many types of tapes are available and what are those uses in different conditions. Okay. So first, uh, let me go through the chain survey or tape survey. Okay. So here, what do you mean by chain survey? First of all, as I told you, all these instruments are used for horizontal measuring devices. So therefore, see. First, suppose if you calculate or if you measure a horizontal distance on the ground, let us take two points, some x and y. So, if I measure the distance between these two consecutive points, or maybe there may be some several points in between x and y. Okay. So, let us take x and y are the main points. So, in between, I may be having some a, b, c points. So, if you measure the length of this particular line or the length between these two x y points by using chain an equipment called chain then we call such a particular type of survey is chain surveying in chain surveying we neglect angular measurements in chain surveying what we neglect we neglect means we neglect angular measurements Angular measurements. 
and we have measurements. What we consider then? We consider only linear measurements. Linear measurements are measurements are considered considered linear measurements are considered okay but whereas angular measurements are not considered means we do not deal with these angular measurements we just only deal with linear measurements so whatever the survey that you did with the help of the chain and in which you only take a linear measurements into consideration then we call such particular type of survey is chain survey Okay. So now we will see what is the purpose of doing this chain surveying. What is the purpose of doing this chain surveying? So let me tell you few things. For what? For what purpose we do chain surveying? You know that now chain surveying, chain surveying. So what is chain surveying? Survey that which is done by done. By using a chain and in which in which linear measurements are taken into account. Linear measurements are taken into account. Now we will see what are the purpose. What is the purpose of doing this chain survey? Or what is the object of doing this particular chain surveying? So here we have some objects. That is, the first thing is to fix to fix boundary lines for a plot. For a plot, this is the first thing. Means the fixing the boundaries is all. Is being discussed or all or this measuring of horizontal or any what any distance on the ground. So therefore, that may be in any shape. That may be in a particular shape or that may be in some different shape. Whatever may be the shape I use. So fixing the boundaries by taking or by using this chain is the first purpose. And second purpose is to get data. Required data required for engineering engineering works. So basic engineering works to get the required data on the site itself. What is the length available? What is the width available? And so on. And all those features. Uh, getting that features information is all the purpose of chain survey. And then. To segregate, or to minimize, or to divide, to divide a plot into number of small segments, number of small segments, or number of small units. As we know. We have discussed in the surveying principle. So the major principle of surveying is to work from whole to part. So to fulfill that particular principle, what we are doing is we are dividing a greater area into small units. So that can be achieved by using this chain. Okay. Then to calculate the area, to calculate the area. Of the plot to calculate the area of the plot. So when you divide a plot after fixing the boundaries, if you divide the plot into number of segments, then the further thing is to calculate the area. So now calculating the area is very very simple. So these four are the major objectives or purposes that are fulfilled by the chain survey. So next we will see. What are the principles of chain surveying? So each and every individual type of survey it has its own principle. So here the principle of chain surveying is something 
means which involving first what we are doing based on the major principle we are dividing or we are taking first we are fixing the boundaries if it is a greater part then what you are doing we are segregating that big area into a smaller number of smaller units then further we are going to calculate the area okay so whole coming to the part so see here this area can be calculated in terms of what triangles means this particular part let us take i am taking an irregular boundary irregular boundary plot so now what we are doing we have to do we have to divide this area into number of triangles plot into number of triangles so it has to form number of triangles like this okay so a1 a2 a3 a4 an an number so working from whole to part so therefore here the principle of chain survey so this can be done by using chain only so the principle of chain survey is triangulation triangulation what we are doing we are separating any area any area any type of shape that may be any type of shape that may be into any extent so we just going to divide it into number of triangles so therefore the principle of chain survey is principle of chain surveying is what triangulation triangulation if if we do this triangulation so now we can measure the horizontal distances by using anything by using chain tape medium tachometer whatever but uh, when you do this particular triangulation with the help of chain then we call it one as chain triangulation if you do with by using tape then we call it one as tape triangulation but uh, as a known we discussed that the principle of chain surveying is triangulation okay so now by this you got an idea what is chain surveying what are the objects why we go through the chain surveying or why we conduct the chain surveying then what is the principle of chain surveying to do chain surveying what what principle we have to follow in all those things next we will see what are the instruments that are used in the chain surveying we will discuss the instruments used in chain surveying instruments used in chain surveying so here to measure the distances or to conduct the chain surveying we have two major different types of instruments so simply the instruments are subdivided into major instruments major instruments and divided into minor instruments major instruments minor instruments where major instruments are simple chains or simply the chain and second one is tape chain and tape whereas minor instruments we have some different minor instrument which involve during the chain surveying or where which we have to use during the chain surveying they are arrows arrows pegs ranging rods offset rods offset rods then mallet optical square 
ऑप्टिकल स्क्वायर ऑप्टिकल स्क्वायर देन लेट मी राइट हियर फर्स्ट सेकंड थर्ड फोर्थ फिफ्थ सिक्स इज द ऑप्टिकल स्क्वायर सो हियर इज फर्स्ट सेकंड सो आई एम गोइंग टू राइट द सेवेंथ वन दैट इज ऑफसेट और क्रास्ट क्रास्ट सो दीज फॉर द मेजर इक्विपमेंट्स एरोस पेक्स पेक्स आर मेड ऑफ वुड एंड आयरन सो नेक्स्ट रेंजिंग वर्ड्स ऑफसेट वर्ड्स मैरेज ऑप्टिकल स्क्वायर क्रास्ट सो इन एक्सटेंशन टू दिस क्रास्ट वी आर सुइंग सम अदर डिफरेंट माइनर इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स but majorly we use these all these instruments the seven types of instruments as minor instruments so now let me go to the chains and tapes now okay so we will go to the chains and tapes so as you know the chain is an instrument where we measure horizontal distances so now we will see how many types of chains are available to measure horizontal distances To measure a horizontal distance, how many chains are available? So see, first in a chain, we will see the classification. Classification of chains. Chains. Okay. So first we have metric chain. Metric chain. Then we have engineer's chain. So. Let let go through the name one, one, two, three, and so on. So next is uh, Gunter's chain. And it is also known as Sabre's chain. Gunter's or Sabre's chain. Then we have. रेवेन्यू चेन स्टील बैंक और सिंपली बैंक चेन सो दीज आर द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ द चेन वी विल सी वट इज द मेट्रो चेन and when we use this particular metric chain and what is the least count of this chain and what is the necessity to use this metric chain so like this for all engineer chain gunter chain revenue chain steel band or band chain okay so first yeah, we will discuss with the, this metric chain so generally if you want to measure a length of 100 meter in market there may be no possibility to Have a 100 meter length chain directly. So therefore, each and individual chains are available in each and individual specifications. So now we will see out of that these metric chains are available in the lengths of. Before going to talk about the length and so on, so metric chains are generally made up of iron. They are made up of iron. Okay, and which are available in the lengths of twenty meter and thirty meter. They are available in the length of twenty meter and thirty meter. So by using this particular metric chain, you can measure a minimum length. A minimum length means least count, least count. Our minimum measurable length is. 20 cm or you can also write this one as 200 mm where is equals to 0.2 m okay 
so this is regarding the metal chain now we will see what are the parts we have in the metal chain and how we we measure the length by using this metal chain so we will see let me draw the figure of metal chain okay so so made up of iron 20 meter and 30 meter lens available not only 20 and 30 meter even it is available in 10 and so but in most of the cases we use 20 meter chains and 30 meter chain by using this we can measure a minimum length of 20 cm and a maximum length of 20 m for 20 m chain 30 m for 30 m chain okay so i will discuss regarding the links also how many links it has and so on okay so see here i'm going to draw the shape So let me take one color chalk. So I don't have a color chalk here. Yeah. Okay. Next continuation. So after this, we will be having the same arrangement and then we will be having the same arrangement and so on. So let me complete this particular figure over here. So it should be like this. Again. So here we have another link. And it's continuation. Okay, 
So this is uh, at the end, at the end of 20 meter or at the end of 30 meter, again we will be having such particular handle. So now let me tell you the parts over here. So generally the distance from so let, let me go to the parts first. So this is known as brass handle. Brass handle. So where it is equipped to hold, to hold in the surveyor's hand. Next up, this is the link. This is the link. So these are known as oil rings. Oil rings. So here we have one sort of joint. So this is a joint between the chain and the brass handle. So we call the joint over here is swivel joint. Swivel joint. Swivel joint. So this is the chain arrangement and now here we have a groove. So this is a V groove. V groove. V groove. So this is generally the chain, metric chain. So here in this metric chain, simple, this is an arrangement in which you will be having one brass handle to hold a surveyor in his hands at either ends, at left first starting point and at the ending point, and which is generally available in the lens of 20 meter to 30 meter. Just now I have told you that least count is having 20 centimeter or 200 mm or 0.2 meter. So whereas here the least count means at the end of brass to the center of this oval ring, central oval ring and center of oval ring to the second central of oval ring. So this particular distance will bond 200 mm means that is called as the minimum least count means less than 200 meter 200 mm we can't measure by using this metric chain. A least, a least measurement of 200 can be measured and the distance from over here to here is again 200 mm. So in which the length of the handle is 50 yard mm, length of the handle is 58 mm, height of this handle is, this height of the handle is 75 mm. And next, whereas the length from here at the end of the brass handle to the starting point of the link is again, this distance is again 75 mm or this may be, this 75 mm may, be, may not be exact, 74 plus or minus 1 mm, 74 plus or minus 1 mm. So that is why I am writing 75, 75. So see, these are the dimensions of the brass handle, so which is arranged with the swivel joint. So therefore, you cannot hold it in only one position. You can change your hand position into any direction when you hold the brass handle in your hand. Okay. Next, uh, this is the link. Uh, so by using this number of links, you can form 20 meter and 30 meter chain. So when you take uh, a 20 meter length chain, for a 20 meter chain, number of links are number of links are are hundred hundred links. So when you go for the 30 meter chain, 30 meter chain. So 30 meter chain has 150 links. 150 links each link. Each link uh, means one link is equals to 200 mm. One link is equals to 200 mm, which is here is equals to the least count. Okay, so this is regarding the metric chain. So metric chain uh, plays a good role in the measuring of horizontal distances. So by using these oval rings, you can link together all these links. So therefore, this may be flexibility. This is because of uh, to make the flexibility while folding and unfolding the chain. Okay, folding and unfolding or holding and unfolding. So you can call in any way. 
so this is the chain so now let me go to the explanation so this particular type of chain is mostly suitable for any type of works means you can measure in the fields even in the agricultural fields at normal sites or in the plots so wherever you want to measure there you can measure the horizontal distance by using this metric chains so these are available in these two particular lengths 20 and 30 meter so these are the links available for 20 and 30 meter so where one link is equals to 200 mm which is equals to the least con 20 centimeter okay so now see you will see some disadvantages by using this particular type of a chain so as i told you in the early session early session of this chain survey especially these metric chains are made up of which material they are made up of made up of iron they are made up of iron so therefore whatever the properties that have or that are included for iron material will affect the property and the working of the metric chain so in most of the cases if i want to tell you the problems that raised in the metric chain you need to know what is the size of this particular metric chain so most of the cases metric chains are manufactured with a wire whose diameter is whose diameter is 4 mm 4 mm whose diameter is 4 mm and whereas here these brass handles are not in a round shape generally they are not in the round section they are if you see the sectional view of this brass so brass handles are generally in a square sections of side of side 6 mm 6 mm they are made up of 6 mm sides okay so now since the diameter of the chain is 4 mm so there may be a possibility when we handle this particular chain in the fields uh, means we just roughly use this metric chain in the fields and in the agricultural areas wherever but uh, so while handling there may be a possibility to bend the wire since it has less diameter so therefore there may be a possibility to bend bending in the wire and second thing is iron it has a flexibility it has more flexibility to stretch whenever an external force acts on the body for suppose if you stretch that particular wire if you if you apply the force when you handle when you handle so one person who holds at one end may may pull the chain in this direction and another person who who hold the chain at this end may pull this in another direction so therefore there may be a force some pulling force is applied over on this metric chain which leads which leads to the failure at the joints as well as which leads to the stretching of the wire since it has less diameter so there may be a possibility of stretching of the wire so this stretching leads to the increasing in the length of the chain actually the chain is manufactured for 20 meter or that may be manufactured to 30 meter for suppose you have used let us assume that uh, you are already used the chain for from past two months or from past three months so after three months there may be a possibility to get uh, bending because of when a wire when this particular when this particular portion bends like this bends like this so which result uh, let us take some four number four number of lengths are bent like this so which resulting in reduction if you bend something for suppose if i bend this duster there may be reduction in the length of the duster so likewise so there may be reduction in the length because of the bending of the material first thing and second thing is when you apply the stretching force over this particular wire or over this particular chain which leads to the increasing in the length actually it has to be 20 meter but after three months continuously you are stretching when you measure so which leads to the increase in energy means actual length should be 20 but that 20 may increase to 20.1 21.2 or that may be 21 meter also that is all because of that is all because of separating the links means or by increasing the gaps at the links increasing gaps at the joints or at the links 
So these are all the disadvantages that we have by using this metric chain. Maybe because since it is it lies I'm sorry, since it is manufactured by the oil. Not only that, but also the temperature is very very important. Why? Because when you talk regarding the coefficient of thermal expansion of an iron, so compared to the some other material, I am going to explain you next next different types of chains that I will tell you. So iron is having some thermal expansion. So when you work with metric chain at high temperature areas, temperature leads to increasing in the length, expansion and contraction. When you got more temperature, iron will expand. So as well as when you have less temperature, very cool area, iron can contract. So therefore, the temperature available in the environment is also affects the working of this metric chain. Means length, shrinking and extending, stretching. So therefore, finally, we will be having some disadvantages and advantages. So I will tell you, overall we have discussed now we will see these are all the parts and these are the dimension. So these are available lengths, minimum, least content, the number of links. Okay. So now I will tell you what are the advantages and disadvantages. Just I, I, I want to write here what are the advantages and disadvantages. So the major advantage is the major advantage is so let me write this part. The major advantage, I am going to write here the advantage. We have advantage. So, what is the major advantage? You can roughly handle. Disadvantages. Disadvantages. We have some disadvantages. What is the first disadvantage? Iron properties. So all the disadvantages that we have in iron maybe leads or may encourage the disadvantages in metric chain. So first disadvantage is chances to stretch. On continuous using first second temperature effects in effects in increasing and Decreasing in length of chain. So when we have higher temperature, if temperature is let us take temperature T, if T is high, then which leads to length is increases. When T is very very less, let us take some 16 degrees centigrade. So length is decrease, means contract. The chain since it is made up of what iron material. Okay, so this is all because of because of coefficient of thermal expansion alpha coefficient of thermal expansion. So generally steel has a coefficient of thermal expansion of 12.5 into 10 to the power of minus 6 per degree centigrade. Okay, so if, if when it has higher coefficient of thermal expansion automatically expand it expands in high degree when it is subjected to high temperatures so see this is first thing chances due to stretch on continuously and then the third one is decrease in length decrease in length 
when it is bent when it is bent okay so bending of iron material which leads to the decreasing in the rate so therefore actual distance would become different measured distance would become different right so this is all regarding the metric chain so next term we will discuss regarding the engineer's chain okay so i am going to drop this part so next step we uh, okay change size as well so next step i am going to discuss in general chain so so how to check the accuracy of the chain is also very really important change so since it has disadvantages because of bending because of stretching and temperature and so on so therefore uh, frequently we have to check uh, frequently we have to check the, the accuracy of this metric chain by using accuracy can be checked accuracy for metric chain i am writing mc metric chain is checked by is checked by using a standard using a standard chain using a standard chain okay by using one standard chain we need to check uh, the accuracy of this metric chain okay so this is r r r by comparing length of metric chain with a tape with a tape okay by comparing the tape length and the length of the metric chain we can also conclude whether it is stretched or it is contracted okay so next term uh, we will see the engineer's chain we will see engineer's chain engineer's chain okay so how to do this engineer's chain okay how to measure this engineer's chain so engineer's chain is very very simple and almost all the types of chain that we are going to discuss are in the same 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 size and same chain so sorry i am excuse me sorry not in the same size but they they are look like in the same chain so the difference is uh, available length and so on so when you come to the engineer's chain so engineer's chain is also made up of uh, iron but see here in this engineer's chain generally it is available in 100 feet long available in length of 100 feet okay so which has number of rings number of rings are 100 rings so therefore 100 feet long 100 rings so therefore one link become what one link will lead to the one feet one link will lead to the one feet so where see here one link is lead to the one feet so therefore where one feet is equals to 12 inches 12 inches so where one inch is equals to 2.54 centimeter okay so if you convert this one inch equal to 2.54 so therefore one feet is equals to one feet is equals to 12 into 2.54 centimeter if you want to convert this into mm furtherly into 10 you can multiply into 10 but whereas here the least count that you can measure by using this particular type of a chain sorry chain is 0 0.75 0 0.75 okay so this is how engineer chains are available and they are mostly preferable they are mostly preferable to get the engineer service or to get the data which is required for all types of engineering works but you need to remember one thing the difference between the metric chain 
and the engineer chain. Engineer chains are works, works under FPA system of unit. FPA system of units. But whereas in metric chain, metric chains, they are works SI units. SI units means here we measure in meter, millimeter and so on. But whereas here we measure in feet, inches and so on. Okay. So but out here in India we just go through the SI units. So therefore we use most of the cases metric chains. But uh, the only difference is here the number of links and available length, these are all some different sorts. So this is how you must have to know this particular thing. So I, I would like to tell you the next one that Gunter chain or you can also call a 